Hello and welcome to the Adventure Toolkit tutorial number two. My name is Glenn Storm and I'm from Hot Iron Productions. Today we're going to talk about making tools. So first let's give a definition. What is a tool? A tool is any game object with a component on it that does something useful. It's actually that simple. So if you've been working in Unity at all, you've already been working in tools. For example, we're here in our blank project with a blank scene and it comes standard with this main camera. Well, the main camera is a game object. It has a component on it called camera that does something useful. It sends visual information to the viewport. It also has some other components, a GUI layer, flare layer, and an audio listener. But it is a tool just like any other tool we're going to talk about. Cool. Well, let's do something more interesting like make our own tool. For that, I'm going to actually disable our audio listener component on our main camera and create a new game object. And I'll rename it Microphone. And then I'm going to add that very same component we just turned off. It's a standard component in the audio folder called Audio Listener. It's a simple component. It has nothing to set. But already what we've done is we've transferred the audio pickup to this separate object that we can move through 3D space. It picks up 3D sound and we can move it anywhere we want in our scene. Well, why would we want to do that? Let's pretend you have a cinematic cutscene that cuts between multiple cameras, but you'd rather not have the audio pickup cut between multiple cameras. In that case, you could set up this microphone object to move smoothly through your scene and you could even set it up to be next to some audio sources that you'd like to play. Cool. Hey, we just made our first um, our first tool. But let's go ahead and do something a little more interesting and make a tool that you can only find in the Adventure Toolkit. For that, I'm going to make a new game object. I'm going to rename it AIM. And I'm going to add some mesh rendering components to it just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to give it a cube look and a default material and then I'm going to place it a little bit closer to the camera. What I would like this aim object to do is point to or aim at another object. So I'm going to create another object and I'm going to call this one sphere and again I'm going to give it some mesh rendering components so we can see what is going on. This time however I'm going to give it a sphere look and I will again place it somewhere in the scene. Okay. So again, I would like this aim object to aim at the sphere. Well, there is a tool in the Adventure Toolkit that will do exactly that. It is in the Action folder, and it's called Aim Lock. Okay, so here is our component, our Aim Lock tool on our Aim object, and it has a couple of properties. If you hover over the properties on tools in the Adventure Toolkit, you will likely get a tool tip text telling you what that property will do. In this case, this property called look at target tells us this is the target object whose position will be the aim of this object at runtime. Perfect. We would like this object to aim at the sphere. So I would like to drag our sphere reference into that field. And now we've set that. Before we go any further, let's look back at the scene panel. And you'll notice that as soon as I hooked that up, there's an extra line drawn from our aim object and it's pointing towards our sphere. If I move our sphere around, you'll see it follow the sphere. This is here drawn for convenience to let you know that there is an aim tool applied to this aim object. And if I hit play, it will turn towards the sphere. Sure enough, it does. And that's pretty cool. I can pick up the sphere, I can move it around, and it will follow it. That's great. Let's do something even more interesting. Let's actually have this sphere move on its own. Well, let's make a new tool to do that. I'm going to create a new game object. I'm going to call it Mover. And I'm going to apply a special tool from the Adventure Toolkit, again from the Action folder, and it's called Mover Single. This as opposed to the other mover called Mover Series. Mover Single moves to a single target. Mover Series moves through multiple targets. For this example, I just want to do something simple, so I will apply Mover Single. Again, we would like our sphere to move to a single target, so I'm going to actually create a target object. I'll create a new object. I will rename it Target. Excuse me. I will rename it Target, and I will place it somewhere in the scene. Okay. 
Here's our mover tool, and here's our sphere, here's our target. Let's put this all together. The mover tool has a couple of properties. The first one says move object, and the tooltip tells us this is the game object to move. Hey, great. I know which one that is. That's the sphere. Let's go ahead and drag the sphere reference to that field. The next property is move target. This is the object whose transform represents the target position, rotation, and scale of the move. Cool. We've got a target object to do just that. Let's go ahead and hook that up. And let's, before we go on, let's look back at our scene panel because as soon as we did hook that up, an extra line was drawn, you'll notice, from the sphere towards the target, and a tiny little wireframe sphere was drawn on our target to indicate that it is a target to a move. This is, again, drawn for convenience, so you can see what things are about to move and whether what other tools are in play. Okay, Let's look at the rest of the properties we want to fill in for our mover single. Uh, first is a move delay. This is in seconds. I'm going to go ahead and set a half-second delay. Next is move duration. This is how long that move will take. I'm just going to fill in a two-second duration for that move and a couple other properties I will set ease in and ease out. This will simply smooth out the move. So it will start slowly, speed up towards the middle, and then slow down towards the end. Okay, that's really all I'm going to set. We'll go over more of uh, this tool and others in example reel videos that are to follow. But for now, let's go ahead and hit play. We should see our mover wait half a second and then move our sphere towards the target over the course of two seconds. All the while, our aim cube is going to aim and point to and follow our sphere. Hey, wouldn't you know, we just made a bunch of tools. And I hope you understand there's a lot of power in these tools. But in order to really leverage that power, what we're going to have to learn about next is trigger systems. And that is the subject of our next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for the next one.